now we're on to part two with our three column notes. First thing we need to do is fill in our heading, name, number, date, first and last in cursive. Make sure you're writing down the date you are doing these notes, not necessarily the date I am writing. All right, so we have some word problems here. If an item costs $19.54, why might someone give a sales clerk a $20 bill and four pennies? Ooh, so this is an interesting question. Why might they give them four pennies? Well, let's see. If you just give the $20 bill, let's see what change you would get. More on the floor, go next door, regroup 10 more in $20. There are 200 dimes. I only need one of them. So I'm taking one of them, I'm leaving 199 dimes and turning one dime into pennies. So 10 pennies take away four is six. Nine dimes take away five is four. Bring down our decimal, zero. So we're left with 46 cents, which could be four dimes, six pennies, a quarter, a dime, or two dimes and a penny, um, but a few different coins that we might get. So let's see if we used $20, four cents, what would happen? So numbers the same, zero is a game. Uh, more on the floor, go next door. Inside my $20 are $20. So 19, I'm gonna take one of those dollars, turn it into dimes, which is 10 cents. Pin, take away five, it's five. And then numbers the same, zero is a game. I get 50 cents. Well, that's two quarters or five dimes, usually two quarters. Two quarters is a little easier to handle than say four dimes and six pennies because that's 10 coins to deal with or even a quarter, two dimes and a penny. That's um, four coins to deal with. This is just two coins or maybe even a 50 cent piece. So you'd get fewer coins back to hold on to. That's fewer to possibly lose. So sometimes if something costs change that has like four pennies or something that you can uh, round up to or, or deal with, it makes it easier for the change you get back. If you give only the $20, you get 46 cents in change. But with the four pennies, it is 50 cents in change which is fewer coins. Okay, next, if you give a salesperson a $10 bill and three $5 bills to buy two movie tickets. So you do give a $10 bill, so you have $10 bill and three $5 bills. So how much money is that in total? 5, 10, 15. So you have $25 and two movie tickets is what you're buying. If one ticket is $11.25, 
how much change should you get? So change, we're looking for change, that's a difference, a difference, and difference is subtraction. Also, you do know how much total money you have and what you're spending, so we're going to subtract. So we know how much money we have, we're needing to buy two tickets. So to buy two tickets, two groups of five is ten, two groups of two is four, plus one more is five, two groups of one dollar is two dollars, two groups of ten dollars is twenty dollars. So twenty-two dollars fifty cents is the cost. We're we have 25 total dollars and we're spending $22.50. Numbers the same, zeros again, more on the floor, go next door, regroup 10 more. More on top, no need to stop, numbers the same, zeros again. So it looks like we have $2.50 left over. I should get back $2.50. Oops, let's complete my sentence in change. Carlos buys some knee pads and elbow pads. The total cost, oh, so total cost, this is important, of the pads is $4.38. Really doesn't matter what he's buying, that's extra information. Total cost, that's important. We know when we know the total, we do know it. It's $14.38. Then we usually subtract or divide. It's probably not going to be equal groups, so we will be subtracting. How much change should Carlos receive if he pays for the pads with two $10 bills. Okay, two $10 bills, well what's that? If I have $10, I have two $10 bills, that would be $20 that I have. So my $20 is what I'm paying. I have paying a total of $14.38. More on the floor. Go next door, regroup 10 more. Well, in here I have 200 dimes. I only need one of them. So I'm left with the 199 dimes. And bring that dime and put it into pennies, which is 10 cents. 10 take away 8 is 2. 9 take away 3 is 6. Bring down our decimal. 9 take away 4 is 5. Numbers same, zeros again. So there's our change. $5.62 left over. Carlos should receive $5.62 in change. Now, for me, I actually go backwards when I am figuring out change. So if I know I need to get to $20, I think, what do I have to add to 8 to make it 10. I have to add 2. That makes this a 4. What do I have to add to 4 to make it a 10? I add 6. So I know it's 62 cents. That now makes this another dollar. How much do I need to add to 15 to get to 20? I need to add 5. So when I would at, actually work as a cashier for um, Chevron or Jack in the Box, wherever I had to, to give somebody change, I actually thought in addition instead of subtraction. What do I need to add to this total to get up to the dollars that they gave me? So I knew exactly what to count up for their change. So that's another way to look at subtraction is what do you need to add because they are inverses, they work together. Dana bought a poster that costs $8.15. She pays for the poster with a $10 bill. And one quarter. So that, how much does she have? She has ten dollars and one quarter, which is twenty-five cents. 
how much change should she receive? So again, we're looking for change. That's going to be a difference. We're going to subtract. So this is where you have to be careful to make sure you read carefully that it's ten dollars and one quarter. They could have just said she had ten twenty-five, but they didn't. You have to make sure that you get that down. And she spent eight dollars fifteen cents. Okay, what would make this harder is if you just saw this number and you went with it instead of making sure you knew you had the total amount. Because otherwise this isn't as that very challenging. Numbers the same, zero is a gain, more on top, no need to stop. And then here, 10, take away 8 is 2. Bring that decimal. And there we have it, $2.10. Not a very difficult problem, but the difficulty comes in in making sure you're careful when you're reading your word problem and understanding that it's $10 and one quarter, $10.25, not just $10. Dana should receive $2.10. All right, so now you're going to go ahead and practice more word problems involving money. Thank you for joining me.